Hi guys and welcome back to Elevate Chem. It's Jesse here with another concept video. Now, this is our fourth video in our five part series covering stoichiometry. And as always, the way we're going to tackle this is by having a look at an exam question because ultimately that's what you're going to need to do. Now I want you to have a go at this question before we get started. And this is from the HSC 2011 chemistry exam. That's question 26. Now, just before you get started, depending on which curriculum you have, you may or may not know this reaction right here. There are some other products, of course, um, but that's not the key bit you're going to need to know. You are going to need to know this information, and I thought I'd throw it in there before you got halfway through and started wondering what was going on. So you may or may not already may or may not already know that bit of information, but it's there if you need it. Tip. You probably will. So pause the video now and have a go and I'll see you once you're done. Fantastic. Now hopefully that all went reasonably well. Sorry about that. Um, and hopefully you found the point at which you needed that information right there. And that was definitely important to the, um, important to the question. And depending, depending on your curriculum, you may or may not have known that fact. Now, for me personally, when I'm going to get started with this question, there is a lot of text up here once again, so I'm going to skip it for now because I want to see what information I need first. I'm going to address it on sort of a question-by-question -question basis. So, jumping into part A. Why is the calculated concentration of the standardized NaOH solution different from the concentration calculated using the mass given, assuming no human error occurred? Okay, so already it's a bit wordy. So what is it really asking there? Why is the calculated concentration of the standard, standardized NOH solution? Okay, so I'm going to have to work out the calculated concentration. I'm going to have to calculate it. Different from the concentration calculated using the mass given. So that means it's going to be a mass, and I'm going to use that to cal cal calculate a concentration, and also there should be another method as well. Reading through the question, whenever it starts talking about a manufacturer makes lemon cordial by mixing the following ingredients, I know that's probably not something I need to concentrate on, so I'm going to cross that out personally just because I don't need that in my mind. Next part of the question. The sodium hydroxide solution is prepared by dissolving 4 grams of NaOH pellets. There's a mass of NaOH. I'm probably going to use that. In water to give 1 litre of solution. So I'm going to jump into that right now and look at the concentration calculated using the mass given. So how do we get concentration? Well, concentration is equal to moles divided by volume. And of course, that's moles and volume in litres. So now in order to get my moles of NaOH, I'm going to use my mass and divide it by my molar mass. Molar mass here being calculated using my periodic table. Now again, depending on the accuracy of your periodic table, you might get a slightly different value here. But I'm going to be using the whole number value, which is 40. So I have 4 grams, or 4.000 grams, Divide by my 40, and that gives me overall mass, uh, moles sorry, of 0 0.1 moles. So to get my concentration, my concentration of NaOH is equal to my 0 0.1 divided by 1, because my volume was 1 litre. And that gives me a total concentration of 0 0.1 molarity, or moles per litre, however you, want, however you would like to write it. So that's my concentration calculated using the mass given. Calculated concentration, how am I going to find that? Well, it says, if I start reading the rest of the question, this solution is standardized by titrating 25 mils with a 0.1011 mole per liter standardized solution of HCl. The average titration volume is found to be 24.1 mils. So hopefully, um, well, not hopefully, it certainly could be a little bit tricky to understand this. But what we actually need here is a reaction which isn't given to us. However, the reason why I didn't give it to you either is because this is a reaction you're going to need to understand and know. And the reaction is NaOH plus HCl goes to H2O plus NaCl. This is a reasonably standard acid plus base reaction. It gives water plus salt in this case. And um, the important bit here was that it's a one-to-one -one relationship between my NOH and my HCl. Because these are the two things that I'm titrating together. We can see there's a one-to-one -one molar relationship. So I can get my moles of HCl, and that's what I'm going to do here. 
And how I'm going to get that is it says the average titration volume is 24.1 mils, and it also gives me the concentration. So moles of HCl is equal to concentration times volume. So it's equal to 0 0.1011 times 0 0.02410. Again, I'm converting this um, volume from mils into litres, and that gives me moles of 2.437 by 10 to the minus 3 moles. N of NaOH equals my moles of HCl equals 2.437 by 10 to the minus 3. Therefore, my concentration of NaOH calculated in this method is equal to my 2.437 by 10 to the 3, minus 3, sorry, because I now have my moles. I'm going to divide that by the volume. Now, the volume here in this case was my 25 mils because that's what the other title was. So I'm going to divide that by 0 0.025, and that gives me 0 0.09746 RE. So there's firstly the proof that I had that there is actually a difference in concentration. That was the first step here. Now, I was personally surprised to find that this was only two marks. Um, however, um, and additionally, that there wasn't much space to go on here. However, you did need to provide some calculated proof that there was a difference. You couldn't just state that. Now, where I got that first answer from, just to remind you guys, is by using this mass and using this volume, assuming essentially that it was just a simple uh, dissolving method. In the second half, it was a titration method between this HCl solution, 24.1 mils, uh, and against this sodium hydroxide solution with 25 mils. So why would there potentially be a difference? It states in the question, assuming no human error occurred, which is very disappointing because that is always the go-to answer in this situation. Now again, depending on your course, you may or may not have known this, and you might have come up with a whole bunch of different reasons. The one that they wanted within this exam, and certainly the one that I think is most appropriate, is the fact that you don't know if your NaOH is impure. In fact, it's sort of implied here that it is impure. So I'm going to write down NaOH is impure. And how you're meant to know this? Because we're assuming the NaOH is impure, the NaOH is pure in this case, the concentration is purely based off this full mass of NaOH pellets. But when reacting it, we found that there was actually less moles um, or less concentration than predicted. And that indicates that there wasn't actually as much NaOH present as you would have thought, indicating that it's impure. And why would it potentially be impure? Again, you may or may not this depending on you may or may not know this depending on your course. Uh, if you don't know this, that's fine. It probably means it's not relevant to you. But NaOH is hydroscopic, and what that means is it readily attracts water because it brings in that water. There's probably and it absorbs that water. Um, it means that potentially some of those NaOH pellets is actually contaminated with H2O. Therefore, contaminated with H2O. Cool. Part B, determine the concentration of citric acid in the lemon cordial. Now there was a bunch of tricks to this question, one of which being if you didn't know this reaction, or at least if you didn't know this molar ratio, you were certainly going to get stuck. Now jumping right into the question, I think it was actually really important in this case to actually read through the question. So we've already sort of dealt with this first bit of the question, let's read the second bit. To analyze the lemon cordial, 50 mils of the cordial is diluted to 500 mils. Then 25 mils of the diluted solution is titrated with the, is titrated with the NaOH solution to the phenylphthalein endpoint. The following data was collected, and there's some data listed there. So what's happening here is I've got lemon cordial, and I've got 50 mils of it. I'm diluting to 500 mils. And then I'm taking out, so it's a, um, a little tighter, of 25 mils. And 
and then that is being titrated with NaOH. So, first steps first is to work out how many moles of NaOH is used. So the moles of NaOH is equal to my concentration times my volume. Now you had two options here, one of which was to use the um, concentration using the mass given. The correct method was to use this concentration here. And the reason why is we just proved that the NaOH is impure, so we should be using that concentration. However, if you use the previous one, marks weren't deducted in this case because of consequential marks here. So moles of NaOH equals C times V. So my concentration was equal to my 0 0.09. 746. Now my volume was a bit of a tricky one. I've actually been given four volume values here because these are my titers of NaOH. So which volume do I pick? Well, what you actually do in this case when you're given multiple values is to pick an average, choose an average. However, we were given this value right here and if you notice, it's not concordant with any of the other results. So we actually exclude this value when it comes to finding the average we purely concentrate on those other three. And the average of these three values is 27.25. So that was my average titer, and that's what I'm gonna use as my volume right now. So I'm gonna multiply this concentration by 0 0.02725, which is 27.25 mils, and that gave me moles being 2.656 by 10 to the minus three moles of NOH. Now, it's at this stage that you had to know this information. And using that molar ratio, we can see that the moles of citric acid, and I'm just going to write it in as citric acid, it does have a formula. It's a bit long, a bit complicated, and I don't need it right now. So moles of citric acid is equal to a third times the moles of NaOH. Now, just in case you're unsure of why it's a third, this ratio indicates that there's three times as much NaOH as citric acid. So that means there's going to be a third as much citric acid as there is NaOH. So that's why I'm multiplying by a third rather than three. And that's going to give me a value of 8.853 by 10 to the minus four moles of citric acid. So we need the concentration of citric acid in the lemon cordial. So there was 8.853 by 10 to the minus four moles. And where were these moles coming from? Well, they were coming from this 25 mil titer. So what I'm going to do is work out the concentration of that 25 mil titer. So concentration of citric in 25 mil titer is equal to moles divided by volume equals 8.853 times 10 to the minus 4 divide by 0 0.025 and that gave me a value of 0 0.0354 moles per liter or molarity. Now, when you're taking a titer from something or when you're taking a sample from something else, just like in this case, the concentration bet uh, between those two samples is identical. And the reason why is that this titer has simply just been pulled out of the 500 mils. So it's gonna have the same properties going to have the same concentration. So that means concentration citric in 500 mil dilute equals 0 0.0354 and therefore the moles of citric acid in that 500 mil sample is equal to um, concentration times volume, so it's 0 0.0354 times 0 0.5, and that gives me a value of 0 0.0, 
zero, sorry, one, seven, seven. And now what I'm going to need to use is, okay, so that was my moles of citric acid in my 500 ml sample. Because it was a dilution, that's the same amount of moles that's actually going to be in my 50 ml sample. So my concentration of citric acid in my 50 ml sample is equal to moles divided by volume again, which is 0 0.0. .0. One seven seven divided by zero point zero five, which is equal to three hundred fifty four by ten to the minus three, which is no, also known as zero point three five four moles per liter or molarity. Now this step right here that I did is potentially a little bit different from what you guys might have done. Of course, another alternative method was to use C1V1 equals C2V2. Personally, I like converting things to moles, but this was certainly another way to approach that question. So, some key things from this question, guys, was again, stoichiometry questions have a lot of text associated with them. And it's useful to be able to cross out the bits that you know you won't need to know. I always jump to the actual question and work out what key elements from the question text am I going to need to understand? Using that, it certainly made my mind a bit clearer and helped me identify the bits that I need to understand. Other things that were useful to know is you're not always given all of the information you require. You weren't actually given this reaction, and of course you weren't given this reaction, though don't panic if you, were, if you didn't know this one, though it is expected within most courses that you will know the other reaction there of an acid plus a base equals a salt plus water. There were other tricky bits, including the fact that this is a worded plus calculated question. Whenever they ask to sort of give you a reason, you, know, you want to back up a fact, try and use calculations. Fantastic, guys. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.